The DTFT, discrete time Fourier transform, was periodic in frequency. Every 2 pi it would repeat. So we would expect to see similar properties with the DFT. I want to show you one that may not be intuitive at first. I've written down here the inverse DTF or the inverse DFT. Now let's go ahead and say x of n plus p capital N. So we've already only defined the inverse DTFT for n is equal to 0 to n minus 1. And now obviously we're, we're choosing a different set um, of values. But there's nothing fundamentally um, wrong with this that, you know, that prevents us mathematically from just evaluating the inverse DTFT at a different point. So this is going to be e to j 2 pi k n over n times e to j 2 pi k p capital N over n. And of course, the capital N's divide out, and then we have e to j 2 pi times an integer. So this whole thing is going to become 1, and we find that, sure, I'll just go straight to it. We're back to our original inverse DTFT, or inverse DFT, and we see that uh, when we evaluate something with the DFT and then later go back and evaluate the inverse DFT that we get a periodic signal. So assume we had some nice signal that may be uh, 0 look like so and it's only in this case five samples long there will once we've taken the uh, DFT and the inverse DFT we now get these mysterious versions much in the same way that we got uh, new frequencies, uh, periodic frequencies, when we did the DTFT. Okay, it may not be entirely obvious, but we're starting to see patterns here. Uh, the first is, if we have just the Fourier transform, there seems to be no periodic, no periodicity. It is infinite in length in both time and in frequency. We've also studied the DTFT, discrete time Fourier transform. And that was periodic in frequency. And infinite in time length. Now we have the discrete Fourier transform. We find that it's periodic in time and I guess we need to establish this, but I've already mentioned that since it's a sampled version of the DTFT, it's periodic in frequency. In fact, it's pretty easy to suggest. So we have one box left here, 
And this is the Fourier series, which you really don't spend time with in this class, but you've seen it before. And the Fourier series is periodic in time. And the frequencies, the frequencies are harmonic. they um, are infinite. Harmonic. In other words, uh, you have terms like the uh, well, frequency is equal to F naught over K for K equals minus infinity to infinity. So let's see if we can put a little structure around this. If we put time on this axis of our box, the upper box is continuous. and the lower box, we have discrete. And here we have frequency. continuous and discrete. So now we've been exposed in some way to all of the uh, flavors of the Fourier transform. Uh, one that's both discrete in time and frequency, uh, the DTFT all the way up to continuous in time and frequency, which is the Fourier transform. And the thing to note here is that uh, if you're discrete in one domain, you are continuous in the other. I meant periodic in the other. Discrete in one domain. That's what happens when I try to write and talk at the same time. Sometimes it gets that long. So here we have the DFT is discrete in both time and frequency, and therefore it's periodic in both frequency and time. The DTFT is discrete in time, therefore it's periodic in frequency, and the Fourier series is discrete in um, frequency, therefore it's periodic in time. So, there is one thing we didn't yet establish, and that is the periodicity and frequency of the DFT. So we have just a little bit of room, let's see if we can do that here. So if we take the definition of the um, forward DFT, and we have x evaluated at k plus n, actually, I should do uh, p times n just to make it a little bit more general although you can get there by induction even if we didn't. The ends cancel as before, so this all becomes a 1, and we get that uh, we are periodic oops, that should be x of k, periodic in frequency as well.